Hey guys and girls, so been been away for a while and now uh, I have a few videos I'm going to make. So but first before I start we'll have my breakfast. Yes, this is Norwegian brown cheese <laughs> because I'm Norwegian with my outrageous Scandinavian accents by the way. Just kidding. And uh, since people are some uh, commenter are complaining about my audio at times. I have been using this and I have been uh, leveling, leveling out my audio and making it perfect. Yeah, so let's put on the microphone and uh, let's get going. Okay, so let's get back to the project I was doing and um, just call it test pro for now. And let's have a look at the schematic. So this is where I'm at and uh, that's not too so much to show you yet. But uh, this is the uh, C64 VHL6526 project. I don't have a name for the board yet. But uh, I have connected up everything that needs to be connected because that was what I was doing three months ago. Trying to get this, uh, all these signals to be routed out to the FPGA. And very annoyingly, using an FPGA, you also have to uh, level translate. So I also don't know if that's going to work. So a lot of things has to be tested. So and now what I'm uh, struggling struggling with is uh, programming it. So since this is going to be like a uh, beta testing thing, um, instead of sending boards back and forth, I think I will just add the. Uh, it's called FT two three two H, which is an um, FTDI chip. Basically that's an uh, asynchronous I.O. thing so you can connect your USB and then on the other side you can then have a JTAG. So it's a FIFO thing and then it can program the uh, FPGA which I think I have all these signals up here I think. Yeah so I have to figure out how to do that and um, I've been reading a lot, so I think I'm going to have it very soon. I've received this from PCBWay, and uh, it's going to be a sponsored video in the next video. It's about the C64 saver. And we've been discussing online with uh, Mark and uh, other people, and uh, how I'm going to do this. And um, the thing is that uh, I already have a SMD component and I wanted to make it um, fully SMD and the main reason for doing so is uh, basically to have two LEDs here so yeah so that's why I did this so, so the boards are really nice so thank you very much PCB way so, um, they have sent them to me free of charge and uh, got a little batch so it's cool it has batteries it has little lights and uh, some stickers. So PCB Way is now six years. So congratulations. And then uh, our ruler. It has all the whole dimensions. <laughs> like AWG. That is the American wire guide. So the thickness of it, eight down to I think twenty-eight. So and you can see different packages. So so that's really cool. I always wanted one of these, but I never really, really ordered them. So, so thank you very much. And then, to make it a little bit easier, we also have a solder stencil. Let's see. Yes. All right. So here it is. You can see it says model C64 saver. Another thing I noticed is that you can see this is where all the solder paste will go, and you can see all the through all parts like LEDs and uh, like cables, they are not going to get any paste. So, so that's it. So we'll see that in another video. So let's talk about this project, which as you have seen in the title, is about a C64 saber tester. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, cool, people are making this. There are more of them out in the wild. I know uh, Mark. Uh, Mindflare Retro has been making kits, which is cool. I have actually nothing to do with that, just to be clear. So, but uh, this design is um, 
the saber design is open source so I was thinking okay people need to test this maybe they don't have uh, the fancy equipment um, so let's make a tester so just was thinking out loud like connecting everything up like this connecting a c64 psu to power the thing yeah then you can test the c64 psu power supply also have a display some buttons some leds and stuff like that uh, so let's get to the design goals later but uh, first so let's think about this how can we make make this box so there's something called euro boards i think uh, which is a standard size you can get extruded aluminium so let's have a look at that i forgot to connect up the router so gonna start from breakfast while we wait there you can see this is one of them there are many types so i was thinking maybe having one that has a front panel and replacing that with a pcb so that would be really cool so yes i have a look at this really nice so what i was thinking making a pcb and then specifying all the holes for everything you need so this is just an example so look how neat it is so it's very cheap to do that also all right so let's have a look at the design goals and i've written it down here let's try to zoom this in so I was thinking having like a PCB as a front panel and then power it in. Then connect the saver like this into here. And I'll find out how to do that. Um, but let's not think so much about the implementation. More like what's the goal of this? So and I have an LED here or OLED thing. Some buttons. I'm just joking around here making it look like a face. So... The one thing I did when I uh, sold the Saver version 1 uh, four years ago, I've stopped doing that by the way, was having a tester like this. And you can also see... Um, hold on, <laughs> talking Norwegian here. Um, yeah, that's better. So, what I was doing is uh, I was connecting the Saver on the test, I actually have one. This is the old one, by the way. It says be wax, so I don't <laughs> put it back. And uh, just for fun, uh, this one is from Thilo, so I was repairing his. Anyway, so I was uh, connected this one here. First, I put some uh, contact cleaner before connecting, so they always were. Uh, um, smooth so I didn't ruin the contacts because I'm replacing these contacts over and over and over when I test new savers so and the way I was doing this I was having a load and uh, started with the load off which are these resistors and then then I had an 80 tiny press the button it controlled a uh, adjustable voltage source PW PW PWM signal which was kept rising so the uh, adjustable voltage r regulator will rise and then until it sees that the voltage cuts and then it will go the other way and then measure the low value and you get an indication and then I would do it the same way uh, for on the load and uh, meanwhile I was also testing on the output here that the voltage was so that was uh, the main goal of that was to testing the switch points upper and lower which are not the same we have some hyster hysteresis here and the other thing I was testing was that I uh, put the thing on load and uh, no uh, and just having it on um, idle at 5 volt and then I put the meter on uh, millivolts like here Put it on uh, millivolts there. And then I would measure from ground to ground. Um, and then uh, red to red. And you get two values and you add them together. And then you get the total resistance over the cable and the um, contact points. 
and that's how much it adds to the system. Actually, I have to <laughs> subtract these contact points because if you use the real cable directly, they will also be there. So, uh, but anyway, you get a measure how much um, resistance you add to the system, and uh, every it's about an amp that the C64 draws. So. Every millivolt is a milliohm. So if you have 100 milliohms, then you have 100 milliohms drops, which is like 0.1 volts, which can matter. So, and the very first thing I also check is continuity and discontinuity. So, uh, I still have my breakfast here. <laughs> So what I did was that I uh, I connected the saver and then I started in one end I con I ohm uh, ground and uh, basically I ohm all this pin like holding one here ohm 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 moving it ohm 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 moving it ohm 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 moving it ohm 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 just to see that nothing is short circuit because I had a problem with that and then I also test that I have continuity, that means ground to ground, uh, 9 volt AC to 9 volt AC, and that they are not mixed up. I don't think it's a big problem to mix those up, but I wanted to be sure that I didn't do that for some reason. So, And then uh, red to red, that will be disconnected unless... Well, it will, uh, I can't really own that because there's a MOSFET in the way, so... But I can see if there's a short circuit between those two, anyway. So that's another goal I want. I was thinking maybe using analog multiplexers. And why don't I just connect it directly to the ADC of a uh, Arduino? Well, I could do that, but remember that one of these pins are going to be tested for more than 5 volt, which is the Arduino. Well, I could just uh, say that uh, the ADC pin for the 5 volt has a voltage divider. Well, I can do that too. Hmm. I will think about that. <laughs> but uh, with an analog uh, multiplexer, you can have uh, the chip. It's like you have a VDD or VCC and ground. But for uh, so when you have the switch or select inputs, zero and one. So you select which input you're going to put on the output. Um, uh, these inputs doesn't have to be VCC and ground or somewhere in between. It can be above. However, there's an input called VDD uh, and VSS, which can be outside the range of these two, which makes it a bit more practical, I think. So I can, if I'm powering this system with the, the 9 volt AC converted to like 12 volt or something, um, then I can put 12 volt here. So if there's a fault, or uh, we're testing a fault anyway, then we will have 12 volts on the, uh, well, here it is, <laughs> on the 5 volt pin, and then uh, this device won't die, or the Arduino won't die, anyway. I'm rambling on all, but this video is just about this, so that's okay. <laughs> Let's turn off the load. It's not really on anyway, but... So the way I was powering this one, though, was these two cables here. So, just hooked it up to a uh, voltage source, put it to 12 volt, and limit the current to, like, 2 amps or something, just in case, just in case. Whoa. Anyway, <laughs> so the next thing I want to test is um, uh, test the PSU. So basically what you're testing then is just the voltage and the current under load and without load. So we need to be able to turn on and off the load. We need to be able to cross check. So therefore I'm doing the analog multiplexer thing. You also need to check um, contact resistance. We need some millivolt measurements. So the way I'm going to do that is um, when you when you test low resistance, it's difficult. So what I did in this one is that I have 
these wires you see here they are actually connected directly onto the contact points so I'm not measuring out here like uh, normally I would do if you're measuring high voltage it's okay because then low voltages will not add any uh, significant errors to your readings but when you're measuring low volt low resistance did I say voltage uh, I meant resistance if you're measuring low resistance then uh, they will then a little error will uh, be a huge error anyway <laughs> so it's a, a four-way measuring thing me measurement thing so what you do so they put a current here um, Uh, like one amp for example so one millivolt will be one um, um, yeah so one amp is a you know the resistance is uh, uh, u, u over i like the <laughs> u is the European thing but anyway the voltage over current is resistance so if uh, the current is 1, then you will just get u over 1, so that's u or voltage. So so 1 millivolt is 1 milliohm, so that's easy enough. So you put 1 ohm here. So basically how I'm, how I'm going to do that is connect a load, R load, into some switching device, like MOSFET or something, so I can turn it on and off. Uh, I'll call it load load uh, yeah, gate sorry I'm not showing you so I'm going to put the current through a uh, like a uh, resistive load and then I'm going to turn it on and off by the microcontroller then this one um, this is not a resistor sorry this is the device uh, under test and uh, we are going to put some metering device here not sure how to do it yet because these are millivolt precision so we'll see how how easy it will be to measure that with a microcontroller uh, maybe it's okay to just connect a um, I don't think I can have uh, voltage dividers here because then uh, the measurement will be way off but I think I maybe we'll get away with a microcontroller I need probably a, a amplifier so I think I will use a chip to do that like uh, I think maybe the INA219 which I'm going to use anyway is going to work maybe I can put a um, analog multiplexer there so I can switch over to these two points from um, ground to this point or something or I can move the measurement point there to there and then um, and compare later don't know yet so or I can use a differential amplifier um, yeah maybe that's better But then we we'll have to calibrate, and then like you're making tester for the for the saver, and then like if the goal was that you don't have equipment to begin with, then maybe it's better to make something that just works out of the box. Like yeah, so so that's basically it. So I think I'm done uh, rambling, and I will have my uh, brown cheese. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.